This is Rookie Amorky, and he is ready for a Morky makeover. So let's get busy. We're going straight to the tub. A proper bath and blow dry is the foundation for a great drum. I am choosing Icrum Squalling Care products for this dog because we are leaving long flowing legs and long flowing ears. Now applying the Squalene Care Conditioner, applying it heavily to his legs, his tail, and his ears. I use a good quality ear cleansing solution after the bath. I fill up each ear canal with the solution. This dries out any moisture I might have gotten into the ears. It loosens up wax and debris. Then I allow him to shake his head and get it all out. Good Bowie. Now with them wrapped in a nice warm towel, we're going to head to the drying table. To blow dry Rookie, we'll be using a Diane comb, an Artero flexible slicker brush, and a Schoenbau wool mount blow dryer. Mr. Rookie is all dry. Now we need to do his nails. This is not his favorite thing. He does not like to have his nails done. I've never tried doing it with him upside down, so we're going to try that today. To trim his nails, I'm going to use the Artero nail trimmers and the Maca Art 180 100 grit nail files. Good boy. It's my man. I'm choosing not to use the nail grinding tool because he has such long flowing hair. I don't want his hair to get caught in the nail grinder. It's okay, Bubba. That's my man. That's my man. Isn't it? Isn't it just so much better like this? Oh, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. There we go. That's all right. It's okay, Bubba. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you, Bubba. I'm not. I'm not going to hurt you. No. I won't hurt me, Baba. I won't hurt me, Baba. No. So when you have a dog laying upside down for any work that you do on them, you want to be sure to give them a release word before you let them up. In my salon and in my house, the word is, okay, good boy, good boy. 
Now I gotta do his back nails. I oh, know it's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Huh. Good boy. Alrighty. He's got the feet all done. He has got the feet all done. She turned was in should be. I was it. No. That wasn't so bad to get your feet all done. No. He's a good boy. He's a good, good boy. He's a good, good boy. Yes, he is. He's a good, good boy. Now we're going to do the pads of his feet. I am using a Schoenbau Digital Clipper set on a 30 blade setting. I'll repeat this on all four feet. Next, I'm going to clip the corners of the eyes by stretching the skin back on the skull and taking my blade and coming in at the corner of the eye and just lightly picking out the hair at the corner. To trim his tummy, I'm going to use the tin blade on the Schoenbau Digital Clipper. You can see he's got this deep crease right over his sheath here. You want to be very careful. These two little pieces of skin can catch in your clipper and you can cut the dog open. So I come this way and this way and lightly pick over the top. He is going to get a fusion inspired style meaning the trunk of his body is going to be clipped very close. His legs are gonna be flowing in a bell-bottom shape. He's going to keep very long ears, a very long tail, and then his face will be rounded with bangs. This is a freestyle trim. It is not an actual Asian fusion trim. Beginning where the gold ends and the black begins, we're gonna clipper him all the way down to his tail. Lightly skimming off his hips. Rounding down around the rib cage. I'm skimming off right about where he has a change of color here. Lifting up the ear, coming under the ear, staying right about where the color changes are. The 
nice thing about these freestyle trims is there are no rules. You can make it up as you go. Many times the pet owners make it up for us, tell us what they would like, and then we have to get the picture of what they have in their mind transferred into our mind as the groomer and then get it transferred from our mind onto the palette, which is the dog. Pet grooming is actually an art form. There are so many variables in pet grooming. Some purebreds have distinct styles but in pet grooming, as opposed to show grooming, those styles are constantly altered by the desires of the pet owner. With the addition of the internet and Google search images, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, there are so many style variations that people bring us and show us it's impossible to even keep up with what people are seeing. And we have to learn these styles. You know, they, they don't just happen. And sometimes people bring us a picture of a style that we as professionals know that it will not work on your dog because of your dog's conformation, coat type, whatever. And it's hard for us as pet groomers to tell you, I'm sorry, but that's not going to work on your dog. Because then you'll just think we don't know what we're doing. But that being said, some of my favorite freestyle trims for pet dogs have been born out of a client's persistence in helping me to understand what it is that they had in mind. We still have the 7F blade on the clipper. Coming down off of this big muscle. I'm going to pick this leg up and scoop out the scrotum area. He is neutered. Exposing the inner thigh. <laughs> Where are you going? Next, we're going to take our Sharnbow Digital Clipper with a 5F blade and we're going to come down over the chest. The reason why I'm using a longer blade in this area is he does have cowlicks and when we trim over those cowlicks with the next length blade, it will match up his shortness with the 7F blade. And that prevents it from looking balded in the cowlicks. Now taking our 5F blade, we're gonna skim down over these shoulders and set his legs up a bit underneath him. By doing that, it will add to the bell bottom effect. If you leave the hair coming straight down off of here, you're not going to have it coming out. And that is the reason why we take it so far up under the elbow and so far deep in here take it straight down in here and take it tight back in here is to add to the bell bottom. 
So here you can see the hair coming straight down. Now when I take my blade and just gently cut in to set the leg up under him, now you can see the bell bottom effect coming in. Next, using my Paw Brother Slicker Brush with the little plastic tips on the tines, we're going to brush all of the hair on the back against the grain. And we're going to go back over all of the clipped areas with our seven blade. Skimming off. Rounding over the rib cage, following the lay of the coat, skimming off on the hips, dropping down into this thigh muscle just a bit, setting the leg up under the dog. Poor boy. I'm going to brush all these hair clippings out of the longer hair. Now I'm using Artero Fusion Curvy Shears. And using the Paw Brothers brush, I'm going to hold the foot up, brush all the hair down on the feet, and clip anything that falls below the pads, being very careful not to nick the pads of the dog with the shears. Good boy. We'll repeat this on all four feet. Yes, you're my buddy. Here's my buddies. Here's my buddy buddies. Yes, I am. Here's my buddy buddies. Now, I do not like to use this brush in the longer hair, so we are switching brushes. To brush this hair out around his feet, I am using the Artero Long Pin Slicker because this is longer, deeper hair. And I wanna pull all this hair out and around the foot. Next, I'm going to bevel the feet. using the fusion curvy between the front and the back. I'll get everything started with the brush and then I'll go back over it with the comb. Now 
now using Igram Magic Mist Spray. We're going to mist over the coat, comb everything down. and go back over these bevels, bringing them up just a bit. I'm taking my Fusion Curvy Shears backwards and I'm going to come straight down about one inch into that leg to enhance the bell bottom effect. we use the clipper to set these legs up under. We're just going to enhance that a bit with the scissors. On both the front and the back of the leg. Picking up this foot taking the curved shears backwards and just coming back off that pad just a bit, checking this inside, setting that back down, combing it all out, set the back of this leg while we are here. Coming down the front of this leg about an inch. This is the only hairstyle, basically. I do not leave hair coming from the last rib and filling in here. With a fusion-inspired style, I always clear out the flank so that I can create a straight-down look here and build this out. Another trim I do that with is on the poodle puppy lion trim, I will clear out the flank a little bit more so I can get a straight down look here. Now we want to get his legs four square under him, get him set up nicely before we start trimming these feet. Shears backwards, come down at the elbow a bit here, clear this out. Each of those subtle snips adds to the bell bottom effect. Please make a boy, huh? Oh, here's my good boy. Oh, I love Rocky. I love Rocky. Yes, I love Rocky. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Clean up this hair in his armpits. Because we want the bell bottom effect from the front as well. 
And if you have too much hair in here, you lose that effect. Now I'm going to round up his mustache. We don't want his beard too short, but we certainly don't want it too long either. I'm going to hold his ears up out of the way so I don't accidentally cut hair that I don't want to cut. With his head tilted up, we're going to clean all this out from underneath. His head is always a bit tricky. I don't want to cut too much off of his head because it messes with his ears in this coloring. So combing all this back and separating it out from his ears. Is where I'm going to blend that hair using my Zolita Yankee Doodle blending shears. We are going to blend this gold colored hair into the blue colored hair. Try to give it a nice natural transition without disturbing this hair that goes into his ears. Now combing halfway between his ears and his eyes forward. I'm going to trim in bangs. I never use chunkers on this texture coat. Chunkers with this silky coat would just leave chop marks. It's much better to go with 46 tooth, 44 tooth blending shears. Now I'm going to stretch the skin back on his skull. And as you can see, he's got this point that comes forward. With the skull skin stretched back, we're going to snip this out. And then let the hair come back forward. Now taking my blending shears, I am going to skim back from the bang. Comb it all forward again. And skim back again. Good boy. That's my man. I have had problems in the past trimming him where if I trim this cheek hair coming up, it leaves a chunk out in between his ears. So I am trying to not trim that at all. And I want this to all grow down into the beard hair and I will trim it from underneath and this will all grow out and blend down better by his next haircut and look good for the coming holidays. And that is one of the main reasons that you should stick with your same groomer. You may not always like what your groomer does. You may think, oh, this doesn't look quite right or that doesn't look quite right. And we have to agree sometimes, you know, sometimes we try things and they don't work and we plan ahead for the next groom it's like okay that didn't work i didn't like the way that came out i don't think the pet owner liked the way it came out either and we keep working at it and it's we keep those things in the back of our mind the next time we see the dog we have plans so don't worry you know don't feel like you have to go groomer hopping you know, your groomer wants to do a nice job and make the dog look great. And if there's something that you don't like, talk to the groomer about it.
and work it out together. All right, I'm gonna comb all this forward. Anything that drops down past the nose, I'm gonna round it back. This will help keep his face cleaner when he eats and drinks. He's not a fan of this, are you? No, you're not a fan of that. He says, don't do that, Mr. Sam. Don't do that. You know I don't like that. You know. Okay, so he shook his head, and we can see hair popped up here all over the place. And this is how I always end up cutting too much out of his head, because we see these things. We must come in and fix them. See, it just looked so good just a second ago, and now look at it. Now look at it. Ah, craziness. Rather than be tempted to cut that, I really want to let it grow. So I'm just going to put a little anti-stat on there. Comb it down into place until it to stay. <laughs> just stay right there. Just keep playing with it till I get it looking like I want it. Little snip here, little snip there, here, snip, there, snip, everywhere, snip, snip. looking good. It's important to look at them from behind and make sure the bevels match all the way around the dog, including from the back view. Make sure the legs look balanced on both sides. Good boy. And check the front view as well, making sure that the bevels match.
Good boy. Making sure it's nice and clean up under here. Double check under the chin. Making sure this matches. Checking the side view on the face, making sure it's balanced all the way around. One thing's for sure, Rookie is no Rookie at being groomed. I've been grooming him for years. You sweet, sweet boy. Aren't you, Ricky? You sweet, sweet boy. Yeah. There we have it, an adorable Morky makeover. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the like button. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.